razor watch yourself so you don't flip off the bump seat. You know, we got an interesting mission going today. We're going catfishing. Believe it or not, we have four generations of Lindners in this boat, so it should be an interesting mission, I suspect. We have Carter, the extreme net man, Nicholas, my son, and the patriarch of the family, Ron Lindner, and it should be an interesting cat show. There are over 2,000 species of catfish. Yeah, 2,000 species and subspecies of cats worldwide. Even though catfish aren't that popular up north, they're actually the fourth most popular species to chase across the United States, just behind bass, panfish, and trout. You know, over the years, I've actually had the good fortune to fish for catfish all over North America, and actually into the Amazon basin. And the interesting thing is, wherever I fish them, it's always the same type of rig and bait. What, do you like catfish? You're good at catching catfish. I've seen you catch them before. But he, he's our, primarily our net man, and he handles the cooler to keep everything in, sort of tight. Okay, let's roll. <laughs> there we go, Carter. You got the baits out, and you're gonna be sort of mod watching the snacks to make sure everything's all right in there. I got some secret treats in there, but I'm not gonna tell you what they are right now. <laughs> you know, we use a uh, fresh cut uh, sucker a lot of times for channel cat fishing. And what I use is uh, throughout the summer months, this is sort of an interesting sy system. This is a, just a Yeti uh, uh, tough bucket. Notice I just put a bunch of ice in the bottom of it, the bucket, and I'm gonna cut down a bunch of, of bait and I don't have to keep on making messes in the boat. It's actually sort of a, the cleanest and simplest system for using cut bait like this. That Yeti system, that's neat. Bucket. Put it inside the cooler. Now watch off the board and we're ready to go. Sometimes you just gotta leave the hard work okay. to the bait boy. Everybody go with life, the appropriate life jackets on. One thing you always do is put the knife in the sheath. A couple of years ago, we were on the Red River catfishing with a knife out on the floor and Al happened to put it through his moccasins. Which, which was a really hurt. There's a lot of sniveling involved with it. <laughs> Ever since then. Okay, boys, we're ready. Watch it, Jimmy. Uh, the water levels look like they're about two foot down, maybe. At That's least. What, yeah. Yeah. What it is. yeah. Watch for those bumps out there. You know, there's two different ways to go about doing this. Is what we can do is fish our way down or drive all the way down and fish our way back up. And what we're gonna be doing is fishing uh, the best isolated log jams. It's sort of interesting, you know, right now it's midsummer, as, as my dad was saying, the water looks to be like two to three foot low. Realistically, the upper Mississippi in this section actually fluctuates probably close to five to eight three feet throughout the course of a season. So realistically from spring, our spring catfish spots are actually high and dry. Right now, a lot of the fish are uh, associated to the main river channel, like that log jam. Nick, you wanna put us on spot lock in position here? We're up, cats, we're up to bat. The channel cat is North America's most abundant species of catfish, and they are the official fish of several states including Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Tennessee. That is rarefied air. Now, this species of catfish possesses a very keen sense of smell and taste. And because they have taste buds distributed over the entire surface of their body, they're affectionately known as the swimming tongue. Interestingly, some of the best times of the year to catch these guys are early or late in the season, and this can be due to spawning. Comparatively speaking, channel catfish spawn anywhere from 70 to 84 degrees of water. That is far warmer than most fish. So if you're a rookie catfisherman, you might think you're going to go out in midsummer and slam some catfish. But the fact is, they could be in the middle of spawn, and that means they will be tucked under cut banks and tough to catch. So watching the water temp is invaluable at this time frame, and the fact is, midsummer can be just as hot as any other time of the year. You know, one thing about catfishing, it's not as so technical as many other, you know, bass fishing and walleye fishing where you're so using so much gear and moving around a lot. A lot of times what we do is more or less just set up in a fixed location, put out some lines, and you more or less wait for the fish to come to you, you know, which is sort of fun. So it's relatively simple. The nice thing is about this is the fact that you can catch some really pretty big ones up in this section of the Mississippi River. Big ones are like, you know, eight to 10 pounds, 12 pounds, but we have oodles and oodles of like three to sixes. 
and it's unbelievable. I know lots of really good anglers that's in this area, guides, and it's amazing. And I actually talked to one of them yesterday who was going into Fleet Farm, and uh, he's never done this before. You know what I mean? He's been a guide for this area for years. You know what I mean? It just goes to show you, it's, you know, it's sort of somewhat of a bypass fishery. How long will these log jams stay before they are rolled out? I imagine you get new ones every year with depending upon storms, but the ones that are in the water, how long of a time you got on them? A lot of these that I've fished these over years after years, uh, and this particular one here has been here for a long time. This was not actually, a, oh, some of them are like build up from when you get real high water where it collects wood, and some of them are actually big fallen trees that where you've gotten cut banks and they've fallen into the water, and those have the tendency to be there for years, years and years, you know. This is a good one right here, because what happens here, this is actually the head of a hole. The hole mm -hmm. starts right here. It's actually a big shallow four foot flat directly above here, and then it dumps into a six, eight foot, and then into, into a 10 foot hole right down here a little distance, about 50 yards down. So you have deeper water, a little bit deeper water access as well as the head of the hole, which is really critical why that log jam is generally a really pretty good one. You know, 50 years ago, there weren't cats down here. Uh, they got into a number of systems. Uh, when Dan gave, I did, was here with Dan Gapen, a, a real uh, aficionado of, of river catfishing. Uh, we worked these areas. And there were uh, one here, one there, mostly further down, probably south of St. Cloud, here and there. They had this place uh, where they were fishing cats uh, in a pond and it overflowed, these cats got in here. And I believe it's, that is the basis of the catfishery that you got here, is those escaped fish from that fishery pond during the flood, the high flood. Carter's teacher last year. Got, got him. him, got him, there he got him, there he got him. Gramps has got him. Carter? Carter, buddy, get the net. Get the, the net, buddy, quick. Gramps has got one on. Wow, I don't know if I can handle him the big all the way. You may have to take command <laughs> and, and get him for Gramps. You Stay down on the deck, down there. Me. I want you on the floor, not up on the deck. You got to handle him. Gramps oh. is going to pull him in there. So be easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm tiring out here, Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, battling way too much. But do you think Gramps can handle him? I don't know. I got, I've got to have a net, get, man. Get up in the corner there. Get ready. Uh, uh, help him. Okay, help me. <laughs> okay, now, Carter, you're gonna have to net him upstream. And what I mean by that is you don't net him that way. You wanna net him this, this like this, because he, you want Gramps to get the fish in front of us, and so it goes back into the net. Okay, watch it, Gramps, so he doesn't get hung on the, no, what are you doing? Get away from the, uh, the engine, there you go. Okay, there you go. So you're going from left to right is the netting action uh -oh. there. There you go, Carter, get get him. There you go. Come on, Carter, get on him. Get that net out there in front of him. Scoop. Gramps is having Scoop. a hard time, Scoop. huh? Get him, scoop, Carter, get him. Come on. Oh, Carter. Deep scoop, buddy. Yep, there you go. That's... Wait till he's up in the right spot. Dad, pull him over to the right. Yeah, so he's got him out in free ground. Okay. Okay, you gotta get him down like this. This is like hockey school. See? Oh, there, there we go. I okay, now him. you get him. Now, now you bring him aboard. Come oh. on. <laughs> Come on, that was a workout. Wow. Yeah, I... Gramps got the first one. I'll, I'll wow. have, we'll get that one out of there. There we go. I like <laughs> that. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, see these things? I bet you, look at there this. There we go. Come here. Just one time you could just touch one of these. These, these barbels. That's how they taste in the water. They got those long, Skinny those barbels. Thing. Those are taste buds, actually. Those are covered with taste buds, and that's how that's they find the bait. That they, that's how they what find the bait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting them back in the water. No, I'm not. Come on, buddy. Well, 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 how about putting there them in a the live world so you can play there with them? There we go. Hey. Netman and, and, and Fishman, high five. Yep, yeah, there yeah. we go, they got one, finally. Now, yeah. now, now you're not snapping open those Mike and Ikes already, are you? 
Yes, Come you on. can. I get one because I clutch the pig. I get the pig. can finally one. bust them open now. Yeah, it didn't take too long. Boy, that <laughs> took about two seconds and the, the ikes were open as soon as that happened. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of different hooks you can use for catfishing. One of my favorites is this octopus. It's a VMC octopus hook. And we use this in a variety of different sizes, everything from two to about a five aught, depending on the catfish we're fishing for. But one thing that's always really important when you're tying this heavy line on, this is 25 pound test uh, Suffolk Siege in bright orange. But what I always do is leave a really long tag on there. You know, catfish aren't all that uh, really delicate and they don't care about that. But the thing is when you tie this heavy line on, a lot of times it'll have the tendency to slip. So you'll notice that I leave a pretty long tag on there just in case when you start putting a lot of pressure on them. Sometimes when you're pulling them out of these log jams, you really have to lean on them. The other thing, I have 65 pound, this is performance braid line. And the one thing that's really interesting is the weight of the sinkers we're fishing. We're only fishing in three to five foot of water, but we're fishing with three ounce sinkers, sometimes even heavier than that. The biggest reason you're using this heavy sinker is once we cast it out, we want it to lock in that position in front of a log jam. In front of right now, we're fishing in front of a like a big subsurface log pile. You can't see it. You can see one little stob there, but there's a bunch of wood underneath there. But once you cast it out, you want this to pin to the bottom and keep its position so it's not sliding around. The other thing that's really important, you'll notice right now, when we're fishing wood like this, we're fishing with a relatively short leader. The reason for that is if you have a longer leader, it has a tendency to move around a lot more and you have the tendency to get hung up. So a lot of times when we're log jam fishing, we're fishing with a short lead. All right, in case you're wondering about that wood out there, those are old railroad trestles. Years ago, when uh, they were doing a lot of stuff, they had a, uh, a mill here. They were bringing in trains and every other said logs. And uh, so those are old railroad trestles. I don't know how old, could be a hundred years old. I know that they're 60 years old because I saw them here 60 years ago. So uh, uh, some of the stuff the fish have, have adapted to. There were no catfish here when those trestles were here. That used to be an attractor for walleyes. Now, I guess we fish for cats. So another underrated aspect of rigging up for this heavy cover fishing with catfish is the knots. So what I personally like to do is I like to do palomar knots and anything that's connected to the swivel. And palomar knots are actually quite a bit stronger. Actually, you could probably say twice as strong as your standard fisherman's knot. Um, and so the benefit of having the palomar knots on the, uh, up higher on the line is the fact that if you do get stuck somewhere in the wood, the weaker, the weaker knot that would be down on the hook is gonna break first. So that way you don't lose your sinker you don't lose your swivel and you don't lose your leader. So that's just another thing to think about too when you're rigging up. So this last one here, just gonna be your standard. Put her in the hole, spin her a half dozen times. And cinch it down tight. And this one is gonna break long before these ones here. I'm gonna cut the tag. This will give you a really good picture of how these fish can move seasonally. You can see like that log up there, that really big log jam up there. That's like an early season type spot when we have really higher water. The fish are pushed up against the bank. And as you can see, as the water keeps on dropping, you can see this pretty extensive flat. These fish, fish as the water drops, they get, keep on getting pushed or sucked to the main river channel. In super low water conditions, it's really interesting. The fish are really confined to the absolute fastest current running down the river. So what I'll do is follow the fastest current line. You know, you do have current here, but it's a lot faster out here because that's the main river channel. A lot of times you're positioning during low water on the fastest uh, current line in the river. Oh, whoa, there, there we go. go. There, that's oh, how wow. Right. Here you go, buddy, take it. Wait, wait, Carter, Carter, wait. Buddy, I need you to take this one. I can't handle him. No, you're fine. You're gonna be net man? Yep. Okay. okay. You got a professional net man here. All yeah. right, I'll get out of the way. Wow, there. he just drilled it. There was no sniffing with yeah, this guy. Yeah, my leader, it just whacked. That was it. Yeah. He's there. All right, buddy, do you think you can hand? This is going to be a bigger one. It's going to be a little more pressure. 
here, I'll t uh, put it on the other side of your body. You ready? Okay, you always want to net upstream. Net like this, upstream. Okay, ready? Okay, now you're, now you're getting ready. Here, he's, he's coming, he's ready. Get him, get go. him, get him. There you go. There you go. There, there, you, go. there you go. Nice, buddy. He's missing a what? He's missing one of his Oops. things. Ready? Somebody cut it off. It was probably Uncle Al. You know what's interesting you'll what? notice? We just pulled up to this spot. Nobody else actually had their line in the water. And uh, yeah, it took all of like 30 seconds for that fish to hit. And that's kind of what we've been noticing so far is you show up to a spot and it's either gonna happen pretty quick or it's not, but looks like the net man gets to hold the fish here. Are you wanna let, let him go? Or let him go. <laughs> all right. There you go. There you go. What you're seeing here is four generations of linders, fishing linders. James is my son, Nick is his son, and Carter is Nick's son. So we've got all the way, we got the full run. You're how old? Six. Six. Nicky? Uh, 26. 26. James is 59. Four. 54. 66. Oh, 54. <laughs> I stopped having birthdays a while ago. Oh, okay. How about you? <laughs> and I'm 86. So uh, I started training the guys early. We start out when they're five, six years old. Danny, my youngest son, used to sleep in the live, not the live ones, but the rod lockers. <laughs> when he would get sick and tired or bored, he would go simply go into the red locker, lay down and close it and go to sleep. Uh, he never got seasick. He says this cured him of seasickness. My oldest son, by the same token, still till today is prone to mel de mer, the, the, you know, the, the seasickness. But anyway, right away we started him. James here made the first television movie with us that we ever made. 50, 60, in 1969, 50 years ago. He was 10 years old at the time, and he was setting hooks much like Carter. He, he was a little older than Carter, but he was working all the way back then. And also, when I was Carter's age, Dad used to take me out musky fishing in late November, <laughs> which, was, <laughs> which was always fun. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed those trips, huddling underneath the, the council, trying to stay warm when it's about 20 degrees and raining, so. You got a biggie on there? What size is he? Oh, there's more like it there. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, darn it. It wasn't that long ago, actually, Nick and his buddies, one of our absolute favorite trips was to go up on the Red River, and we'd do this, what, when you guys were in high school for Once quite a, a few years, and it was absolute favorite trip was to go catfishing, because the thing is, we would weigh fish in hundreds of pounds for the day. That's how many fish we'd catch over the, the course of a day of fishing. This is a really sort of a cool spot, and what happens in here, when you look up river, there's a big outside sweeping bend, and then the current is really focusing and then you actually have this log jam and then it makes another corner into a deep hole. But the biggest thing, this is the lead log jam coming into the spot and that's what's really critical about it. It has a tendency, you usually get, get a number of them off this, this area right here. But look upstream and you can see it's just like a big outside sweeping corner bend but you really have focused current is the key. And it's really interesting actually so the head of this point, oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> That's that how, it's about how long it takes to get him too. There, there's a real boy get there. The net, buddy. Oh, oh, Carter, are you, are you on the net? Yeah. Okay. Come on, you're gonna get him on this. I'm out of the way. Wait, wait, okay. let me get in. Wait, let me get okay. in. Gramps right. is out of the way. Okay, get ready like that. Okay. Okay. You'll see, notice the way. Keep it out of the water yep. until you're ready to scoop. Yep. Gramps, watch your rod. Out of the way. Ooh, there's a real oh, whistler. Oh. Boy, those guys are tough. Come here, buddy. Oh, come here. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Okay, Rays, you're over on this side. <laughs> come on, buddy. Oh, but now you're splashing Gramps with the net. Come on. Whoa, wait. Come on, Scoot, buddy. Here, up like that. Yep, I told you. Come on. There you go. 
Oop, you get him? Oh, close. Come on, you gotta get him. Oop. Okay. No, you gotta scoop. I told you, upstream current. Upstream. Hit him. There you go. Now you're talking there. Now get it down, <laughs> down in the water. Hang on. There you go. There, there. Oh, get him. There you got him. That's a That's good one, nice, buddy. Nice, nice scoop, Bubba. Wine here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Pretty fish, aren't they? A lot of people think that these things are lethargic, you know, scavengers on the bottom, but nothing could be further from the truth. We actually fit for catfish in a wide variety of different ways. Everything from spinner rigs to uh, Santee Cooper rigs, float rigs. Okay, Bub, hold, you gonna hold them? There, come on, oh, you, <laughs> come on, you, come on. Okay, get him back in the, in the drink. Come on, you got, no, you gotta be, oh, gotta give him a big scoop. There you go, okay, get, get him back in the pen. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops, Well, okay. you're working on it. They're maybe also, maybe okay, you gotta well, wear the gloves one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they're kinda tough, too, so that helps. <laughs> you're oh, I gotta wash my hands. That's yeah. what I, that's what that's why we have this rag here. That this one's is known the other as, one. No, that's this the is known one. as the cat rag right here. He's the he's the wet cat reach one. It? You know, we really have fabulous electronics and as we were talking about one of the tools that we use a lot for this catfishing is the spot lock feature on our Altrex trolling motor. It just makes it so much easier. We don't have to be lifting that 25 pound Navy anchor up and down all the time. But the two other features that we use a lot on my Hummingbird is one is side imagery and the fact that what I can do is uh, drive down the middle of the river channel and actually find isolated log jams that are subsurface, you know, and there's a lot of, as the water gets lower and lower, more of these fish are pulled into the middle of the river. And that enables me to find a lot of those wood jams and good log piles that is below the surface. The other thing that I use a lot of in rivers is a feature called Auto Chart Live. I can make my own one foot accurate contour map of this river instantaneously. I make three or four passes down this river and I'll have an accurate map. And not only that, it has a water offset feature like all Lake Master uh, char chip cards in that I can adjust it based on the current water levels. If it's three or four feet high, I can put it up three or four feet high. If it's two or three foot low, like we're fishing now, this is to offset two or three foot low. But one thing that's really important here, when you look at this, is just like a big maze of, of brush, and you'd think that you don't know, cast anywhere in there and the fish would actually find the bait. But what there is is really specifically better spots. And what that is is where the big main beams of the wood comes down. And you can see like right here, that's where the biggest main beam comes into the water. And that keeps on going down. The same thing, the last two fish came off of that next piece, but the big beam right in front of it Ooh, perfect. That's a scary spot. Very, very scary. But then you have to have to get it out of the brush pile if he swims that way. The interesting thing is, is so many different times, how fast the fish come out and hit the bait. To me, it's just amazing. You know, that bait hits the bottom. It's leaking that scent and it's drifting back into the log jam. And many times we'll have two or three guys set up at about the equal distance and we we'll almost all get strikes at the exact same time. So that tells you the fish are that far, about the similar distance back in the log jam, and that's how long it takes them to track in on the bait. It's almost amazing. I was out here the other day with Al, and it was, it was the weirdest thing in the world because we got three guys in the back of the boat, and one guy will get a bite, the other guy will get a bite, and the other guy will get a bite almost instantaneously at the same time. It's interesting too, on other days, you'll notice like every single log jam you pull up to, it'll be like, six minutes every time right yeah just depending on how fast they're moving that day right yeah then some sometimes you got to let let it sit there for 10 minutes just to get one bite yeah you know what i mean so it it just depends on their attitude of the relative attitude of the fish when the fish are really active it's sort of weird on how fast they find it it's i mean they find it almost instantaneously i mean you, you go out throw it out there it'll hit the bottom let it sit for 30 40 seconds and they're on it like now it's when they're obviously actively hunting. They're up on the front faces of these uh, these feeding spots, and they're ready to go. I'll take this shorty in the corner here. Whoa! Oh, Dad! Okay. <laughs> that was that. That's an action shot. Okay, Whoa. come on, Whoa. Carter. Whoa! Whoa! Wait, 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 wait! wait. I gotta get out of the logs here first, Bryce. Oh, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I know I'm trying. Hey, buddy, okay, here. buddy. You can okay, fire now. Come on, okay. get back up. 
Okay, but Grab the rod. Okay, okay, you gotta get it on the rod. Fast, buddy. Get on your stick. Fast. Okay, come on, Bubba. Give me the neck. Give, okay. give me the neck. You think get he can handle the neck ramps? I don't okay, know. Okay, there you go. Now you gotta put it down. There you go. Ooh, he's a roughie. <laughs> what? <laughs> there we go. Okay, keep pump. Guess okay, who's on pump? Neck. Okay, real. There you go. Grab her on. Yep. Ooh, Ooh, do you see his tail? Oh, this is a big one. I don't see it. Come I saw on, Razorback. <laughs> there he is. Ooh, oh, that's a good one, buddy. Come on, oh. Whip, okay, that's good. Hang on, hang on, Raze. Here, okay, here, yeah, Raze, grab the, grab the rod. Grab the rod for the last, there you go. Now lean on him, come on. Hard, buddy. Well, you gotta lean up. Hard as you can. There you go. <laughs> there you go, come on. There you go, you can get him. You gotta, nope, nope. Oh, you got it stuck in your suit. Okay, there you go, now you got him. <laughs> there you go, it's sort of like tuna fishing. Oh, crap, that's a good one. <laughs> There we go. Oh, there we go. Holy cow. That was a really workout. This is really a good one. This is a big one. <laughs> bye bye. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. I'll tell you one thing, it is fun. I can guarantee you that much. When you get one of those nibbles and close into the log jam, you got to lean on them. There's no question about it. That's why we're using that 65 pound braid in that 25 pound. Uh, you know, Suffolk, so you got to use really heavy line, or otherwise you know, it's just tough to land them. You want to hold him, buddy? Did you, you, you were leaning on him pretty good. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, now this time he's going into the drink appropriately. Okay, there Some... you go. Okay, look at that. There's a, a lot of times you know what we call him, the Razorback or the Sky Tiger. There he yeah. is. Okay, put him back in. Good one. There you go, buddy. Nice. Good one. What? Usually keep Carter occupied with two different things. Fish in the live well and snacks in the cooler. Two Mike of the and things. I. Yep. How do you like how do you like him? He's a pretty one, isn't he, Carter? Whoa. So as you can see, we've been targeting a lot of these different isolated log jams. And realistically, you know, a lot of these spots might hold three fish to maybe 20 fish for some of the really big log jams. Um, but as the season progresses, you know, over the next few weeks, as water temperatures start to drop to maybe about 50 degrees or so, it's kind of when the biggest movement happens. Uh, as Gramps said, after Labor Day, um, that is when a lot of the fish will start to dump down into what we might term wintering holes. And in a lot of cases, those wintering holes can be pretty easy to find. They're typically the deepest holes in any given section of lake. And oftentimes when we fish, in the fall, in those wintering holes, there'll be hundreds of fish stacked up in there. For log jam fishing like this, we're fishing with pretty heavy equipment. You know, we're fishing with pretty heavy weights, three to five ounce weights. We're trying to position them in very accurate locations. So what we're using, this is a St. Croix Mojo Cat Rods. This is a eight foot heavy, extra heavy rod with a fast action. That fast action helps in, in able to make an accurate cast. The extra heavy is to jerk, the, jerk and pull the fish out of them once you get them hooked but it's pretty, pretty heavy duty tackle here for this type of fishing situation because we're facing pretty nice sized cats. The small, on the small side, the small ones are four pounds, the big ones are, can be up to you know, 15, 18 pounds. So talking about horsing the fish out of that heavy cover, dad talked about using heavy rods. I like to pair it with bigger, stronger, faster reels. Um, right now I'm using a Daiwa Alexa HD 300. Dad's got a 400 on his rod. Um, but to me, the important part is the gear ratio. Mine is an 8.1 to 1 ratio. Dad's is a 7.1. And what that allows you to do is really torque on the fish fast. And also, I like to use braid, you know, along the same lines, no stretch. You don't give that fish any chance to get back in the wood. Wait, no, he's going back into the trees. Whoa, whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. No, this isn't good. Nick, you're gonna have to sit it down. Whoa. Your dad's grandpa's oh, dad, bringing a tree. Oh, Dad, you're bringing up. a log in with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Gotta muscle him. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning on him. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice. There we go. Ooh, Are you gonna scoop holy, this one, bud? Holy mackerel. Wow. It's the first spot we got two fish on. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Two, three. There we go. All right, get ready for the scoop, buddy. There we Other go. Other way. There's a good one. Whoa. 
Okay. Hold it in the water. Come on, Reyes. You want to get them current up. Go current uh, head stream, upstream. There you go. Now put the net down. Aim. Now you're talking. Aim for his head. There you go. Come on, up. There you go. Get him. Come on, Reyes. There, scoot left. Up. Come on. Come on, buddy. Get it. Get him. Get it. You got to lift. All you right. got to lift now. Come on. There you go. Oh, there, there we there go. You go. Well, <laughs> oh, that's a biggie. <laughs> Boy, that guy had me really into. Do you see that? How I was trying to pull that fish out of the log jam. Holy mackerel, man! Was that? He was, I thought I thought you lost him in there. These boys are really tough customers. They really are, aren't they? Oh, wait, you could see the way that fish was pulling. No question about it. What a gorgeous fish, though. He's there getting. Yeah, he is. What's your skinny, that? Yeah, he is your skinny man muscles. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I had. Let me see how I pulled that big boy yeah. out of that brush pile. You would have probably folded up. Probably, I would have. Yeah. Okay, Ray's, you gonna let this guy go? I don't know if you can handle him or not. He's a heavy. He's a heavy, right a heavy on one. That's him. a heavy one. Ooh, that's a biggie for you. Let him walk it out. Okay, that yeah, way. twist around. Let's see. Let's see him. Whoa. Oh, they're getting bigger. Okay. 